So I want to welcome you guys here, and I want to first start by saying, well, I'm Mandy. My name is Mandy Moss, and I am just so thrilled that you're here. And, I, you know, you might be thinking, why am I here? Is this really what God wants me to do? I really believe that every person who's here is here for a reason. I believe that God has brought you here tonight, and it's been my prayer that you would show up, and it's been my prayer that he would move in this time, so that's what I'm asking him for tonight and you know there's so many times where I even look at my own life and I go what qualifies me to invest in the lives of the next generation and I could come up with a laundry list of reasons as why I'm not qualified but I always come back to the only reason I'm qualified and that's Jesus and what he's done in my life and through my life so I just want to let you know that if you're here tonight and you're following Jesus you're absolutely qualified and God will use our brokenness and he'll use the places where we think we're not good enough He'll use the places where we think we can't. That's the brokenness that God uses to transform not only our hearts in the process, but also we get to pour out that transformation and someone else gets to see it and look at it. So I wanted to first start by telling you uh, the Brave Girl story, uh, if you haven't heard it yet. And I'll, I'll be brief. There's a lot of things that I want to get through uh, tonight. But I definitely want to make sure if you haven't heard where this whole thing came from, that I get to tell you that. So. Several years ago, I was working in a student recovery ministry. I actually helped at God's leading bring this student recovery ministry to our church. And during that time, I got to see the power of students getting real and truthful and, and what that would do in their life. Very often, it was the game-changing ingredient that helped them finally break free from the things that they were struggling with. And so they come in that first night and it would we get to that time of sharing and very often I could put my finger on when they weren't telling me what was truthful. I could just, it was their, I would call it their Sunday school answer is what they would give me. I wouldn't tell them that's what it was. It's just what I would be thinking in my mind. I, I would just go, that's not really how you feel. You're just telling me what you think I want to hear. And then the ones who would keep coming back, we would start to see that change. And then you could identify, you could identify that first real answer. And from that point forward, you began to see transformation in those girls' lives. So leaving this ministry, when God called me to move on to something else, was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. He was calling us to leave our church, and part of this would be moving on from this ministry to whatever he had in store for my life and my family's life next. And I never <coughs> forgot about the students who were there. Leah is one of the girls who was there. I've actually known Leah since she was six, and we'll talk more about her later. Uh, but... It was very, very difficult and very, very, very challenging, and I had to trust God in that. So God brought me through a couple of different things. My children were growing, were growing up. My younger children were um, getting out of those toddler years and, and all of that. And I ended up at this conference for leaders who are leading women in this ministry called If Gathering. And at the very end of it, they gave us this time of reflection. And at this point, God has, has me working with women. It looks like I'm, I'm veering down the path of... Of, of being in ministry with women and at this point I'm thinking about women I, I'm around women and I'm sitting here at the table at the end during this time of reflection and they're telling me what does God want you to take away from your time here and God gave me the words refuse to leave the next generation behind and I was like whoa where did that come from I wasn't expecting that I wrote down the words brave girls and this is how much I thought it wasn't for me I actually took it after I wrote all this out and I turned to the girl next to me and I said, I think maybe this is for you. Like the, the lines got crossed when God was talking and that he actually meant that for her because certainly he wasn't saying that that's what he wanted me to do. And so I left that gathering and I got home and I couldn't shake it. I couldn't get it off of my mind. I wrote it all down again and I posted a, a picture up in front of my desk on my wall that said brave girls on it. And I knew that it was something that God did not want me to forget. Well, we go through some other things with our children and just life is kind of chaotic for a little while and God is working some things out uh, in our lives. And I get to this place where I just can no longer shake it. And I know that God is asking me to move forward, but there's still a lot going on in my life. And I'm like, God, how do I do this? I don't have time for this. And what he put upon my heart was do what you can. So I was like, all right, I know what I can do. I can invite the girls who I know. I have a teenage son. I've just been connected with girls. I was connected with girls through the student recovery ministry, through my, through my older sons. 
And so I, I just knew I could invite the girls who I know over to my house, ask my friend who is just awesome with students and who I love so much to, to be there with me. And we would put some questions on the table, encourage them to be honest and talk about how they really feel. And we would see what happened. And then we, we came up with this idea of having a tangible takeaway because I'm very much a person and so, so is my friend who likes to have things that I can see that reminds me to have these things of remembrance. So we came up with these uh, tangible takeaway ideas that at the end of the conversation, they would create something with their hands and that would remind them of our great conversation. And so that's what we did. And we invited girls over, they actually showed up and we had an amazing time and girls got real and honest. And so I, I just thought it was amazing. And I started sharing this with other friends. I posted about it on social media and immediately people started contacting me and asking me, how did you do this? What did you use? What questions did you use? Hey, can I, no, sorry. Can I do this? And I said, absolutely, yes, sure. So by March, when we were preparing our next Brave Girls Gather, I put it up on my, I, I blog, just you know, here or there, and I put it up on my blog, the resources that I was using so anyone else who wanted to do it could do it too. And from there, Brave Girls Gather was born. And so Brave Girls Gather is about bringing one more woman into the life of a teenage girl to point her back to her identity in Christ. Because we know that the enemy is working very, he's very busy in culture, continually challenging what their identity truly is. And it's repeated on handheld devices all day, every day across the globe. So Brave Girls Gather does not replace student ministry. It doesn't replace any place where she's currently being fed. It's just about putting one more woman in her life. And I've seen the power of that through the girls that God has put in my life. I've seen the impact of that. And one thing that several of them have said to me is that their friends don't have amenity. They don't have someone like me in their life. And they feel blessed that I take the time to spend time with them. So even when I moved on from that student recovery ministry, I still had girls in my life and I still reached out to them and I still spent time with them and that meant something to them. So that is what Brave Girls Gather is. So why is this important? I asked God that question. I knew that this